started. Okay, so good morning. My name is Dr. Dan Gordon. I am um, an associate professor in cardiorespiratory exercise physiology at Anglia Ruskin based in Cambridge. And for the next 30 odd minutes, I'm gonna to talk to you about the possibilities of studying sport and exercise sciences, both, um, you know, both at potentially at AIU, I'll talk to you a little bit about that, but also in terms of what you need to think about if it's an area you're, you're interested in when looking for courses but also perhaps hopefully to enlighten you a little bit about what sport and exercise sciences is and possibly isn't. Because I think sometimes we have a little bit of a kind of a, a misconception um, that if I'm gonna go and study sport at university, I'm gonna be playing football or rugby or hockey and, and that's it and it, it doesn't lead to anything. And hopefully I can help dispel that kind of myth for you as, as we go through. So let's kind of start out about the whole notion about what sport and exercise sciences are. Because once we understand a little bit about it, you'll then start to think, oh, actually, that is something that I'm interested in. That's an area that I can see myself studying in or potentially further down the line, getting a, 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 a career in. Now, you're in that position where you are starting to look, you're starting to think about what you want to, to study at, at university. And one of the things I would say is that don't don't get so preoccupied. I think we get really, really obsessed by trying to pick the right course or the right area. And we think that that is going to change that that basically sets us on that, that that path for the rest of our lives. That's not absolutely the case. So don't don't panic if you're not sure what you want to study. But what I would say is important is that you make a really well informed decision. So you have to you have to do your homework. OK, so you have to start to think a little bit about, well, what is it I'm looking for when I'm going to university? It doesn't matter whether you want to study sport and exercise science or medicine or dentistry or art or whatever it is. You've got to do your homework. Start to ask yourselves now, you know, actually, what are you interested in? What skills do you possess? So if you're if, if you're perhaps somebody who is not particularly good at examinations, don't pick a course that is exam heavy. If you're somebody that has um, an ability and, and, and the skill set to work practically, then you should be looking for courses that have got a high prevalence of practical based sessions. And all of this information is, is available from the universities when you go through something like UCAS. But also make sure that you, you're picking a course that is something you are interested in. And again, Courses will have very similar titles, particularly under, under that kind of banner of sport and exercise science, but they can mean many, many different things. So again, have a look underneath the kind of the title about what the content is about. What, what are the areas that the themes that the university is going to be covering with you over your, over your journey? And so if you do your homework right in picking the course, one, it means that you're going to study somewhere that you, you're hopefully going to enjoy. But two, it is probably going to make you in the long run um, stand out in, in what is actually a very highly competitive job market. I think if you go and pick a course that you're not necessarily sure about, you're less likely to be involved in it, less likely to be motivated. And so the result is that you, you end up really not positioning your, yourself well because you don't buy into that whole ethos of the course. OK. So what are or what is sport and exercise science? Well, sport and exercise science is a broad discipline. It's a broad church. And it's the application of scientific principles to the promotion, maintenance, enhancement of sport and exercise related behaviors. Now let's, let's think about that. So for example, you might be somebody that's thinking, I quite fancy the idea of working in physical education. And you might think, oh, actually, I quite like the idea of doing a, a degree, which is maybe sport and PE or, or, or something. Well, that comes under this broad banner of sport and exercise science. And that would fall into the idea of, of promotion. So if you think about what we do now as, as, as PE teachers, a lot of PE teaching has moved away from the convention of standing on a cold playing field with a, with a whistle and a stopwatch. Actually, a lot of what we face now in terms of, of, of PE and uh, physical education is, is the promotion of physical activity and health. 
the scary statistics are one third of the population in your age group, one third are now classed as clinically obese. And so PE teaching is moving away from perhaps just being playing sport, but actually in promoting healthy lifestyles and physical activity. At the other end of the spectrum, perhaps you, you're thinking about the notion of um, high performance sports. You're thinking maybe about physiology or biomechanics and you're thinking about elite athletes. Well, if I'm working about kind of uh, working with elite athletes and it's about enhancement of those related behaviors, everything is about behavior, whether it's to do with physical education, whether it's to do with clinical practice, whether it's to do with, with elite sport. And so when you're thinking about the degree that you're looking for in the field of sport and exercise science, ask yourself that very basic question. What's it tapping into? Is it tapping into the kind of the promotion, the maintenance and enhancement or all of them? Which of those does it kind of fit into? Because in the end, that, that is what we are dealing with. If we're thinking about maintenance, as a great example, we know we've got the um, European Championships on in, in, in football at the moment. And the, the, the issue that a strength and conditioning coach faces is how do you maintain the fitness of the players over what is a month long tournament? You're not trying to enhance performance and you're not trying to promote physical activity. You're trying to maintain this. And so at an elite level, you can see how that fits in. But then think about it. Maybe maybe you're thinking, gosh, what about clinical? And maybe that's an area that you've not even thought about. But clinical practices where we're working with um, populations that are, that are exhibiting pathologies like uh, COPD or lung disorders or diabetes, then again, it might be about promoting physical activity, but a lot of that is about maintenance and trying to maintain a health, health in, those, in those individuals. So that is very much where your courses are going to be. Irrespective of the kind of course that you study, they're going to fall into that very broad principle of those principles of promotion, maintenance and and enhancement. So the question then you've got is, well, why would I, why would I choose a sport and exercise science related degree? Well, there's a lot of really important reasons to think about, many which perhaps feel a bit nebulous to you at the moment, but I suspect if your mum and dad were sitting in the room with you, um, they would be telling you these are fundamentally the key things to think about. The first thing is this, sport and exercise science as a discipline area not just not just at one university, but as a discipline area, has the lowest unemployment rate for any degree level discipline in the UK. So the chart that you see here is taken from the Sunday Times newspaper. It was it was an independent study that was done. And sport and exercise science has an incredibly low unemployment rate. You we turn out graduates that are highly employable. Could be going into all sorts of different career areas, but they're highly employable. And the other statistic that really goes with this is that nationally, 71% of, of graduates are actually employed within six months of, 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 of graduating. That's going straight into a, into a career. And just to kind of put into context and ease you off, that's a career that's designated earning over 24,000 pounds. So they're actually, you're actually going starting off quite, quite well graduating. And then you can add on top of that, the, the students that then go on maybe to study postgraduate qualifications. Fundamentally, in the end, that is what this is about. And I know that's quite a scary thing to be thinking about, but fundamentally you're, you're, you're going to university to, 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 to have a clearly have a great time at university and study something that you're interested in. But at the end, it's got to have a benefit. You're, you're going to be paying an awful lot of money to go to university. So you want to make sure that you're picking a course that is right for you, but also in the end, is going to enable you to, to get into a career. And the fact that as a discipline as a whole, sport and exercise science allows us to do that is a real, real plus. Now, in terms of what sport and exercise science encompasses, it could be any of these major areas here. So things like sports therapy related, and they'll have different titles. It could be strength and conditioning. Sport and exercise science is an odd one because the theme is sport and exercise science, but sport and exercise science sits in that. You may hear it as, as sports science. Some universities call it sports science. And then anything which come, kind of comes under the coaching banner. So sport and exercise science doesn't cover things like sports management or sports marketing or sports development. Although you may cover some of those in some of these degree courses. So, you know, if you're interested in kind of rehabilitation and, and, and that kind of work, then you may be interested in a career in sports therapy. 
if you're interested in the idea of, of um, training and developing and, and looking after athletes and also looking after clinical populations and strength and conditioning may be the course for you. If you're interested in the idea of, as the title says, coaching, but maybe physical education and, 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 and that kind of skill set, then clearly you're looking for a sports coaching based course. And if you're interested perhaps more in, 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 in a broader church, so thinking about the biomechanics, the psychology, the physiology, the nutrition, then sport and exercise sciences would be the course for you to think about. So what should you then be looking for in your course? So this is kind of a, a, a tick box list, I would say. I've been, I've been working in the field of sport and exercise sciences now for well over 20 years. And so um, really come to understand what it is you as a prospective uh, applicant should be looking for when you're applying for one of these courses. So the first thing you've got to ask yourself, and this is fundamental, is, is the course accredited or endorsed? And you're probably going, well, why, why does that mean anything to me as, as a prospective student? It's what we call a kite mark. So, for example, you may have friends who are thinking about going to study physiotherapy, for example. You may have seen a physiotherapist. Um, a physiotherapist will generally, well, no, they will be, will be chartered. So they have chartered status through the HPC, which is the Health Professionals Council. In sport and exercise science, there is a, a governing body in the UK called BASES, the British Association of Sport and Exercise Sciences. They are the governing body of, of sport and exercise science, and they are able to kite mark and endorse courses. And what they are doing is they are quality assuring the course. So by having that kite mark, it states to you as the prospective student that this course has been independently assessed at the highest level by an outside organization who have, who have actually ratified that the quality of the materials that are being taught are at the highest level, the facilities are at the highest level, and the, the staff qualifications are also at the highest level. So always look to make sure that the course that you're applying for has got bases endorsement, really important one. Then the next thing I would always look for is, does the course have partnerships? We're in, a, we're in a, a global world, we're in a global society. It doesn't feel like it particularly at the moment when we're using online technology, but we absolutely are. So ask yourself the, 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 the question, does, does the course have partnerships? And if it does, who does it have partnerships with? So for example, does the course have partnerships with maybe professional football clubs or professional sports teams, or is it linked to the NHS? These are really important because they will enable you to gain skills outside of the course, so actually in the real world, maybe in high performance sport, maybe in clinical practice. If you're interested in physical education, does, it, does the course have connections to both primary and secondary schools? Does the course have opportunities, some courses do, for you to go and spend six months of the course studying abroad? It's a fantastic opportunity to, to have. So really important to look for those. And then the other thing I would, I would ask, and I think we often forget to think about this, is are the staff suited to be qualified? So yeah, PhDs, yeah, okay. But the one I would, I would say, if you really do your homework is, find out whether the staff have got what is called FHEA. They are at least what we call fellows of the Higher Education Academy. It's like your, your, your teachers that you've got with you, having done something like a PGC or a PG Cert or having a B.Ed. It's basically, a, again, a stamp to say that, that those staff are able to teach in higher education at the highest level. So, again, some things to really look out for, because, again, these are all about separating out different courses. There are 84 courses in the UK that come under the broad title of sport and exercise science. So how do you kind of separate the, what I would say the wheat from the chaff? The next thing to ask yourself is what do the students say about the course that they've been studying on. So there are a number of things to look at. The first thing I would say is go, if you haven't already, and go and find the portal online, which is called Discover Uni. And Discover Uni allows you to compare all courses within any discipline area. So if you go into Discover Uni and type in sport and exercise science, all the sport and exercise science courses appear. But what it allows you to do is it allows you to then compare those courses on really important metrics, really important things, such as <clears throat> the employability rate. 
So although I said to you nationally, 71% of students go into to, to employment within six months, that's an average. So within every average, there are going to be courses that have got a, a, more students going into employment within six months are courses that are worse than that. You can find out what the NSS score is, and I'll come to that in a moment. You can find out how, what their fees are. You can find out, for example, um, the kind of what, we call, what they, they call the value added. So in other words, what the entry tariff is that the students come in with and what they actually leave with. It is connected to what is called the National Student Survey. Every university has to show you by law the, the results for the National Student Survey. It's an independent survey run by Ipsos Mori. All graduating students, as they are preparing to leave, are asked to fill in this. It's about their experiences of the course. And they rate the course on things like teaching, on feedback, on facilities, on um, um, access to laboratories, on the student unit, everything. So it rates their experience. It has there is no there is no interference from the university at all. It's completely and utterly independent. So look at the National Student Survey score. The higher that value, the better the course is in the eyes of the students. And then the final thing is use things like league tables. The guarding league tables are considered to be the definitive guide. There are, other, there are other league tables, but the reason the Guardian is considered to be the definitive guide when you're looking at these is it, it's not about things that aren't of interest to you. So, for example, the Times does a league table, but it's a lot about research and the amount of money the course makes in, in, in bringing you know, um, research in. The Guardian league table is very much about the number of staff that the course has. It's about the entry tariff. It's about the National Student Survey score. So, these are the, really the, the places you can find out about how good courses are. Because it's very easy for me to sit here today and go, yeah, of course, AI is the best course in the country. Of course, I'm going to tell you that. But these are independent of us. And so this is when I said about at the beginning, doing your homework. This is where you really would, you would start in terms of doing your, your homework. So very briefly, I'm going to talk to you about Spoiling Exercise Science now at ARU. And ARU probably feels a little bit close to home. You know, we're based in Cambridge. Um, so why, you know, why come and study Spoiling Exercise Sciences at ARU Cambridge? What is it that we've got that may be attractive to, to you? Well, we've got four undergraduate degree courses. Again, not surprisingly, because we, you'll see this in a moment, they fit under those broad headings I was talking earlier on. We've got a sport and exercise science, which has actually been running for well over 20 years. We've got sports therapy, we've got strength and conditioning, and then we've got our physical education course as well. We've also got two distance learning courses, which are for uh, people working in, in football. We've got coaches from all over the world studying on these, and these are pure distance learning, and they've been running for about 10 years. And then we've got our master's courses as well, plus PhDs. So there's plenty of opportunities here. You can do all of our undergraduate courses, either full-time or part-time. So you could actually do a, a, a conventional three year or you could do a six year part time. We've got what's called a foundation entry. So, for example, you, you didn't do particularly well in your A-levels or B-techs, you can do an extra year. And we've also got what's called a sandwich degree. So that means that you can actually take a year out in the course and go out into industry and go and study and then come back. So we've got students this year who are actually off to America. Um, COVID, COVID um, agreeing, and they're off to America to go and work um, in high performance strength and conditioning facilities for six months in America. We've got students who are going to be working in sports therapy clinics. Um, we've got students who are going to the English Institute of Sport because they're going to go and study with us for two years, then they go out on placement and then they come back for another year. So there's so many different ways that you can kind of study with us with, to get your, your degree. Our courses are endorsed, and it does feel a little bad. I was looking at this earlier on thinking, blimey, it just feels like I'm setting everything up. But fundamentally, this is the key. We are one of only nine courses in the country that have got both our course endorsed and our laboratories. So this is a really you know, an enormous um, stamp of approval that the course has been endorsed, and the course has been endorsed now for about six years, and laboratories for about six years as well. So this is saying that our work in terms of what we do at undergraduate is recognized at the highest level, but also the work that we do within our laboratories in terms of research and athlete support is also of the highest level. And as a student, you access those facilities. Additionally, and you may have heard of this organization, 
Uh, our undergraduate course is also accredited by SIMSPA, which is the Chartered Institute for Management of Sport and Physical Activity, which means that then we can offer SIMSPA endorsed um, uh, additional learning on top of the degree. So not only are you going to come out with your degree, but we are also able to then give you SIMSPA based courses in things like um, um, health and, and, and safety in relation to strength and conditioning, additional courses to do with therapy, additional courses to do with, with coaching. So all of these can be actually gained on top, but that's because we are an endorsed course within the higher education sector. Our facility is a fantastic facility. So this is us at the bottom left. This is Sport and Exercise Sciences in Cambridge. We have that building. Um, for sport and exercise sciences, our laboratories, one of which is what you can see on the ground floor, that is one of ours. That is our um, primarily our biomechanics laboratory, which is a 30 meter long biomechanics laboratory. We've got seven labs um, and they are based on the ground floor. You've got your own cafe area, which you can see at the top. Bike racks, very important in Cambridge, but all your teaching facilities are here. So our uh, lecture theatres, our team based learning rooms, everything is based in this in this one facility. It is a five minute walk to the main campus where the Students' Union and all other facilities are based, but it allows you to become part of a very tight knit kind of cohort of, of students. Big thing, though, is that we focus on is employability skills. It's no good you studying for a course and actually the, at the end of it, you've just studied and you've gained knowledge. We want you to develop your employability skills. So what we have is we have an employability module or two employability modules that run alongside the course and these are what we call zero credit modules you have to pass them but they don't have a credit weighting to them and it's about developing your cv so you have to go out and get experience in in maybe coaching or working as part of our um, consultancy team so we run a consultancy team for physiological testing or you have to go and, and attend some of the excellence in sport lectures or you have to go to conferences it's all about building up your employability skill set so that as you graduate you've got what is called value added you've not just got the degree you've got everything else that goes alongside that and we are we've been really at the forefront of pushing this and so the net result is that is why nationally 71% of graduates are in employment within six months from ARU, it is 96%. 96% of our students go into a job within six months of graduating. And, and we're really proud of that. And that's because we really work hard with you in terms of developing all these skills as you go through. Alongside that, we offer uh, internships. So you can obviously do the year, which is out in placement, but we also run internships while you're studying. And this, again, are tied to wanting to develop your, um, your employability skills. And so it enables you to kind of go and either gain qualifications. You might wanna go and work with elite athletes. Um, it allows you, to, for example, to get involved in, in, in research and work on research projects. So, for example, at the moment, we're running internships over the summer, and these are, the students on these are very happy because they're fully paid. Um, I've got a student at the moment who's working on an international research study, which is to do with um, the benefits of, of exercise to people with, with Down syndrome. And it's a collaboration with Google and um, Brain HQ, and it's Canada. It's a fantastic opportunity. We've had students going to the EESA. So we've had students on placement at the European Space Agency. We've had uh, students who go and get experience at the, in the NHS working clinically or British rowing. We have a large number of placements. You can boo. I mean, you're Peterborough. You can boo, of course, at, at Cambridge United, um, who take our students to do things like performance analysis, physiological testing. We can really find the opportunities for you. And any time an opportunity comes up, we allow you to go into that. And again, these sit alongside your degree. So these are not... Um, taking time out, though that's kind of if you do a placement year, but these might be anything from three to six hours per week. And then I mentioned the National Student Survey. So I just thought I'd leave this and just pause. This is the, the, the last round of results that we got. So this is summer 2020, and this is what our graduates rated our course. And remember, this is completely independent of us. We have no say in terms of what their, their opinions are of the course. So an incredible set of results. Now, what I will say is this is not a flash in the pan. In 2015, we were the only course in the UK, 
not in sport, but in the UK, to score 100% on every single category. Every single category. We have consistently achieved the highest scores in any sport and exercise science course in the UK for the National Student Survey. So clearly we are doing something right in terms of the eyes of our students. We're clearly doing something right in terms of getting our students out into, into employment. And then you go, well, okay, yeah, what about the Guardian League table? Well, we are the number one ranked course in the UK for sport and exercise sciences. You can see it's sitting plumb top there. And, you know, you look who's below us. And of course, the courses that everybody thinks about, people like Loughborough, you might think about Birmingham or Bath, they're down there. If you're thinking, by the way, about Leeds, for example, everybody talks about Leeds, Leeds is ranked 84th out of 84. Okay, you have to ask yourself, why is that the case? Well, we'd score very, very highly on clearly student satisfaction is good. Teaching is obviously good. Staff student ratio is high. But also, for example, we do well in terms of our conversion rates. Our entry tariff is a lot lower than many other courses, but our success is really high in terms of getting students out into the bigger, wider world. OK, um, I suspect I'm just about on time. I think I had about 35 minutes with you guys. So if you want to kind of find out more, I'm happy to answer questions in a minute. But if you want to find out more, that's where you can find us in terms of our website. We've got open days. We're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook and so on. Um, but uh, yeah, happy to answer some questions if there are any questions through the chat or however you want to um, posit those for me. where it goes very quiet. No problem. Anybody else? You're welcome. <laughs> Waiting for the other group, see if anybody else in the other group got a question. No? Oh yeah, there we go, let some come in. No questions. OK, perfect. Well, in which case, um, enjoy the rest of your day. I hope that was useful. I have recorded it, so I don't know whether you guys want a copy of that as a, as a, as a recording. It is available as a, as a recording. Um, you're more than welcome. Um, if there's anything that I've kind of missed or you want to ask or you, you, you want to ask it afterwards, just send me an email. More than happy to provide some information, whether it's on a national level or a, a local level. But uh, enjoy the rest of your day.